So the first paper we have today is our head judge, the head judge of the performance forum of performance days, but we also share the same forum with the functional fabric fair, which is the American version of the show. It happened last week. Um, Alexa can explain herself. She'll take you through the range, the overview, make your life easier. If you get bored of sitting here, you're meant to go and see all the stands. That's why they've come here. They want you to go and visit them. But you can also wander into the other halls. All the fabrics that Alexa's going to talk about are in the performance forum. We also have a display from Utah State University who have set up the outdoor archive. And they have some tremendous jackets. We found one on display last year that was older than I am. And I have proper gray hair. Um, the thing I most enjoyed about the jacket is that they had the traditional white Anglo-Saxon male promoting it in this classic black and white advert, and he was smoking a pipe. I think 60 years ago, they hadn't quite developed the thinking about oxygenated blood in those days. But I am transferring the subject. We're going to kick off now. We've got a full day of presentations. Do ask questions. Stay around to ask questions at the end. I will come and get you with the microphone. Also, these talks are all going to be uploaded. So if you miss it or you want to go back, in about 10 days' time, they'll be on the website and you'll be able to play everything again. So just at that point where you can't explain it properly to your colleagues at work, tell them to watch the video. But if I could welcome Alexa. Thank you for joining us, Alexa. I will let you introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Charles. So a very, very well warm welcome to Performance Days 2022, November 3rd, here in the MOC for one time. I'm very happy and very pleased to start the day off with the expert talks. And I want to talk about the forum insights um, that we had on the performance materials throughout our jury for, th for this show. So, the latest performance trends on the tables and accessories, you will talk about novelties for winter 2024, from first layer to outer shell, for important trends in fabrics and functions, focus topic, the journey to carbon neutrality, and this time it's going to be about time to score. We will have more than 1,000 product submissions, from more than 185 exhibitors. There are 314 selected fabrics on the tables in Hall 3. And we have 144 selected accessories here presented in Munich on the wall. So please also go on the digital loop um, because all exhibitors that exhibit here have the option to upload many, many more materials, many more trend materials throughout on their website. And through material search, you can find fantastic other fabrics as well. So we have many great sustainable fiber variations and base layer this year. So tensile blends can be seen in numerous looks, color variation, and their extreme softness. We have organic cotton, or cotton with sea wool, or merino wool. And we have ethically produced wool variations as well as regenerative merino wool. You will find bio-based spandex, such as Hyosung or recycled lycra. Nylon from post-consumer, waste remains a trend, and waffle structures. As well as in terms of color, you will find some soft pastels, tones, nude optics, natural shades, and a lot of black. If you will look at the base layers, you see innovative blends, recycled polyamide inside with tensile, wool blend outside for perfect moisture management, Merino wool, Cordura blend, protection against tears, scuffs, and abrasions. Merino wool, biodegradable, bio-based, polyamide, Evo by Folger, and graphene yarn added. Then we have natural comfort, sea cell additive, anti-free radicals, anti-aging, moisturizing, 
hypoallergenic from natural seaweed. We have oyster shell, comfort of natural fibers, merino wool, organic wool, and tensile, 100% biodegradable. You will find bio-based blends, bio-based spandex combined with carbon capture yarn, bio-treatment stands for a low-carbon footprint. And you will find some jacquard knit jersey with gripper band on the edge made with 40% Royka and bio-based spandex. The mid layers are this year, this season, very versatile for 24 and a d very diverse category. Varieties range from biodegradable nylon or recycled polyester to highly technical innovations, such as bio-based nylon, French terries, tensile, wool blends, or organic cotton terry. We have great development of antimicroplastic technologies, non-brushed fabric optics alternative with brushed material fibers. Industry is looking for environmentally friendly green polyester alternatives and biodegradable polyester. In the mid layers, you will find some natural mid layers, such as three thread structured fleece of hemp, organic cotton, tensile, lyocell that gives the fabric softness. We have three thread fleece from hemp, tensile, lyocell, wool, RWS with wool inside and natural touch outside. And you will find hemp, organic cotton with super grid fleece. Then we have less microfiber constructions, such as rayon and naya cellulose acetate, made from sustainably sourced wood combined with bio-based serona fibers for mechanical stretch properties. And Polatec Power Stretch, advanced dual surface knit construction. Then you will find recycled nylon from old car tires. 37.5 technology, polyester with EB additive to enhance biodegradation. 3D constructed, delta peaked with super soft hand fill and good wicking, quick dry. In the soft shell and outer mid layers, there are very few innovations in the classic soft shell segment. But in addition to technical soft shells such as power shields, evolution fleeces made of recycled polyester or outer mid layers made of soft shell construction in trendy waffle structures or shell construction provide for striking looks. You will see some honeycomb looks. And um, interesting is that graphene provides a special surface. Bio-based polyamide is used as an environmentally friendly concept and sequel fibers. Technical soft gels, you will find 100% recycled polyester, highly stretchy, fully protective and waterproof, membrane weighed with plant-based polymers, bio-based nylon and bio-based polyester, three-layer laminate with maximum amount of bio-based new material. Fancy is recycled polyester fabrics, solution dyed woven fleece fabric, and double size woven fleece fabric, less microfiber shedding than knit fleece, sharper appearance by double face woven fabric, soft hand feel, moss texture, fluffy and cozy. Merino wool, sequel polyester blend, only wool on the outside is dyed to lower the fabric's footprint. Q-cycle polyamide by Falga, produced by end-of-life tires. Recycled stretch reflective fabric with high visibility. Coming to outer layer, 2.5 and 3 layer, by 2025, the use of fluorocarbons will no longer be permitted in Europe. Focus is on developments that bring function to the fabric, yet refrain from the use of chemical treatments. Many blended fabrics alternate in this category with recycled fibers such as recycled polyamide. Flying Tex processes 100% organic nylon chips made from castor oil, reducing the use of petroleum. Green Threads convinces with an option made of waterproof three-layer fabrics made of 100% recycled twisted polyamide with mechanical stretch. 
Simpatex presents the STX Bricks and Sky, a lightweight three-layer performance laminate. The first and second layers are made from 100% recycled PES. The material has a technical look and is ideal for fashion, athleisure, or technical sportswear goods, thanks to the mini ripstop structure on the fabric. Coming to the membranes, you will see some high-end hydrophilic membrane, which can reach 20,000 water resistance and 35,000 um, moisture vapor permeability. Polyurethane monolithic hydrophilic membrane and TPU membrane printed with Trizar, which can improve the breathability and avoids the fabric sticking on the skin. In 2.5 and 3 layer, we have quite a few dope dyeing, e-dye waterless color system technology, fabrics made from garment waste through chemical recycling. As well, you will find some light will crinkle polyamide three layer fabric, 2.5 layer recycled dyed yarn fabric, and nylon made from castor oil to lower the CO2 emissions. In the outer layer, two layer, you will find some beautiful lightweight fabric variations, recycled polyester or recycled nylon, many mis recycled fabrics from fabric residues and fabric waste. Recycled TBU, thermoplastic polyurethane, is extremely tear and abrasion resistant. The dyeing technologies for two layer are as well dope dyed yarn, low temperature dyeing, solution dyed yarn. All have lower carbon footprint compared to virgin piece dyeing. Water, energy and gas emissions are reduced. Fantastic to see is also that garment and textile waste now will be transmitted into performance materials, so such as recycled polyester fabrics made from recycled waste garment or cutting waste, stock fabric and offcuts that are not used. The membranes are, for example, recycled polyester membranes, GRS certified hydrophilic membrane up to 20K, 20K, bio-based membrane, and DuPont bio-based serono membrane. In the lightweight and downproof, there are some glossy looks in classic black. Dyeing is often with natural colors, for example, coffee, where there are waterless dyeing methods, fabric treated with castor oil that does not wrinkle, does not smell, and is also ultralight. Beeswax is used to impregnate lightweight and downproof fabrics. Beeswax is providing a new surface structure as well as tear and abrasion resistant. The extreme lightweight starts at 31 grams, and you will see some 50 denier yarns, recycled nylon from GRS pre-consumer, recycled polyamide, fishnet ocean wastes, Renicle from Recycled Nylon 6. There are quite a few monocomponent fabrics that are mostly from recycled polyamide with beeswax coating, providing a new surface structure and tears and abrasion resistance. Of course, there are some really fancy lightweights this time, such as the micro whip stop with the digital or overprint special treatment to give shine a 20 denier nylon dyed using an innovative process, and pocket weave. The trends towards natural fabrics is ongoing in shirt. Polyester shows up from carbon capture yarn, fibers made of 100% organic cotton, hemp, and merino are dominant, plant-based finish toward off mosquito to combat unpleasant odors, and bird technology. The natural blends are recycled wool, tensile modal, tensile lyocell, organic cotton, 100% cotton with a plant-based mosquito repellent finish. The text with small ventilation holes integrated into the design, seersucker structure with small ventilation holes, 
four-way stretch with seersucker appearance and three-tone striped slop jersey. Woven pants fabrics in pants and tights are made of 100% organic cotton, hemp and merino, and it's quite dominant there. Recycled wool with modal land a soft touch and provide for warmth in winter. Great stretchability and water repellency and recycled nylon from old car tires. The knitted tight fabrics are often cozy, thick, warm jerseys. Q-cycle polyamide, innovative polyamide made from recycled tires by Folger. Cupro added for luxury touch and rip optic or 3D. The woven pant fabrics, recycled nylon from old car tires, chemical recycling, pyrolysis, classic check fabrics, ideal for suiting. Natural woven pants fabrics, all with 2% elastane or 2% lycra, different fiber blends with hemp, BCI cotton, merino wool, organic cotton, and tensile lyocell. As well as twill surface, great stretchability and water repellency, denim with hemp and wool, good strength, water repellence, and elasticity. Knitted tight fabrics are coated thick warm jerseys, Q-cycle polyamide, innovative polyamide made from recycled tires by Folger, Cupro added for luxury touch, interlock air textured. The knitted tight fabrics are rip optic, recycled perforated stretch reflective fabric with high visibility, fine knit fabric with a waterless print, the eco wave method. Coming to function meets fashion. Sports fashion and submitted fabric innovations reflect the zeitgeist for winter 24-25. Incredibly versatile and beautiful textures and constructions. The jaguars is in soft pastel shade meet the current zeitgeist of digital youngsters accompanied by great sports style look at extraordinary graphics. So, you will find some nice varieties of prints to surfaces and textures. Three-layer ultrasonic bonding, sophisticated wave look with semi-transparent transparent elements, shiny stretch and downproof. Tie-dyeing technique to create unique pattern, new pattern te technology of soft gel with 3D hollow layer that captures body heat. Sherpa fleece with excellent warm, super soft hand feel. Seamless warp knit echo needle nylon with body mapping for ventilation and support areas, jacquard knit with deadlock colored yarn for inventory. Coming to safety, health, and durability. 2024 season offers little in terms of innovation, but the range of robust materials without the use of chemicals is sufficient, with neon tones of yellow, orange, pink, or green varieties dominating in terms of color. New recycled options, including multiple recycled nylon and recycled polyester, remain in trend. Durability, abrasion protection, tear resistance, elasticity, breathability, wearing comfort. Working materials need to have high technical performance values. In the high vis fabrics, there are this time some bio based TBU membrane, TBU bio membrane from Dupont Sustera. Solution dyed polyester, 100% recycled biodegradable polyester, and Sherpa fleece fabric. 100% organic cotton, very densely woven, recycled polyamide by Econil, recycled Cordura nylon, PFC free water repellent finishes, and abrasion tear and tear resistant. The focus in the bags and footwear segment is on robust fabrics that can be applied in the bag and shoe sector. So it's the second time we show bags and footwear, and we want to actually um, enlarge this section. And it requires materials which stand up to the harshest weather conditions. Long-lasting products are possible with woven containing Cordura or recycled polypropylene. You will find some ultra soft suede knit like knit textile popular from palm materials of cycling gloves. 
0.75 millimeters recycled sustainable leather, alternative with great performance and hand feel. Pineapple yarn added to recycled polyester, structure fabric by yarn combination, two-tone fibers, yarn adoptite, high density construction. Footwear as sustainable content, recycled polyester, recycled rubber, FSC certified natural rubber, tensile lyocell, and cotton. Coming to the accessories. On our wall special, um, I was very proud to see the development of our carbon footprint journey because um, last, last season we saw the first pilot developments of certain directions such as for example garment and textile waste and now we can really see first fabric suppliers that offer recycled polyester from garment waste. One is offering technology chem chemically decomposed polyester fibers into raw material. The same will be CRZ recycled polyester yarn. Interesting is that CRZ saves energy and reduces CO2 emission, but the fabric quality will be the same as virgin polyester. Another factory offers garment recycled PS is GRN. The other one that we saw first fabrics as pilots in last season was with carbon capture yarn, and I think it's a fantastic technology to capture the yarn from the carbon, from the gases that come from the factories and recycle it into new fabrics. So carbon capture yarn is slowly moving out of pilot state with Lanza Tech carbon capture yarn evolves. The carbon recycling tech company converts the greenhouse gas into ethanol. Then ethanol is turned into monoethylene glycol, a chemically normal made from fossil fuels Finally, the monoethylene glycol is converted to polyester called Bio3 Bio PET filament. Also, CCU yarn by Aramo used by Everest leads to some new developments. Recycled car tire nylon is the third big trend. We've seen first, we've seen recycled car tire nylon in pants fabrics. Now you will find it in any category. So any layer has now the option to offer car, recycled car tire nylon. So recycled car tire nylon is now available from many fabric suppliers and for different categories and functional textiles. The polyamide yarn is obtained from tires, chemically recycled pyrolysis, such as BASF, at the end of their useful life. Besides of the low ecological impact of the yarn, other raw materials are generated and can be used for different applications without any waste during the process. Coming to the, fa to, uh, the accessories themselves. The visibility add-ons have some full reflective screen printed transfers, silver reflective particle print, and transfer with only selected parts that are reflective. In the labels and patches, we have some 100% tensile lyocell, full leather patch with grape left over, recycled TPU, recycled paper label, PU film with tea leaf waste. Then there are some thin lines, le less ink transfers, anti-abrasion transfers, 3D heat transfer with cork, water-based heat transfer with PU. In tapes, there is grip band with dream shape, high compressive elastic webbing, recycled eco cool max, mesh tape, glow in the dark blended yarn. In trims, recycled horn buttons, bio-based, nylon cord stopper, new style of recycled polyester cord, smart cord lock system made of recycled nylon, and organic cotton, recycled polyester blends, and 100% recycled polyester, 100% recycled polyamide econyl. So, and the 100% polyester, recycled polyester is reprieve. So we have reprieve zippers, econyl zippers, and we also have one variation of 100% biodegradable. In applications and linings, 
you will see sewing threads made of recycled polyester, recycled polyamide, or organic cotton. We have cycling pads for men's and women's anatomy with knitted breeze yarns for cooling effect. And fabric ideal for inserts and applications. Insulation and fibers is 100% lyocell, first 100% biodegradable padding under natural conditions. 100% recycled polyester padding and graphene additive. Now, talking about the focus topic, the journey to carbon neutrality. Time to score. So, since the last edition of Performance Days in spring of 2022, the jury has been following a path and a part of a roadmap of fiber and material experts towards the goal of CO2 neutrality. In the focus topic category, coinciding with the upcoming winter edition, the green light to participate was ex exclusively given to fabric innovation that could certify initial values in CO2 reduction for the submitted fiber innovations. In combination with the current HIC index, the aim is to make it possible in the future to achieve a better assessment of the CO2 balance in the production and development of new materials and fibers for the industry itself. And I would like to ask Charles Ross to explain us a little bit more about it. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Le Thank you Alexa. Um, we're all fascinated by the carbon impact on fabrics. And this is the second show of a three-parter trying to get every fabric swatch to have a carbon impact on. Now, carbon impact is what we most associate with the climate crisis. We laid out a methodology at the last show. Our biggest conclusion this time is that all the fabrics in the forum area on the focus topic do have a carbon rating on. So a polyester coming out of China is coal-fired, so it has a higher score. Polyester coming out of Japan is renewable, so it has a lower score. Polyester coming out of France is nuclear, which is somewhere between the two. Our biggest takeaway learning from this show, or the judging, is that everyone's using different metrics. So we have to improve for the next show. Yeah. If I pass it back to you. Thank you very much. So, after all, how can the values of natural fibers such as wool, cotton or tensile be compared with those of recycled polyester, recycled nylon, bio-based polyester or bio-based nylon? How do you deal with the various qualities on the one hand with different strengths on the other? And how important are such factors as the production side and the production processes within this context? So, in the end, there's still a way ahead towards the CO2 neutrality. So, Marco Weicher, CEO of Performance Days, states, we wish to enable our visitors to make the best decision in terms of material selection, but also in terms of CO2 neutrality and ultimately also in terms of textile recyclability. In general, as was also the case in spring, four different categories can be distinguished that guarantee lower CO2 emissions. We have synthetic fibers with variants made of recycled polyester, recycled nylon and polypropylene. Natural fibers such as tensile, hemp, naya, spun fiber or recycled natural fiber variations also remain in demand. There's the chemical dyeing process, all fibers that are waterless, protests such as spin dyed or the use of dope dyed yarn. And the fourth group is made up of fibers that combine several variations, for example, a recycled and dyed in accordingly safe, accordingly energy saving manner or use natural recycled fibers. So the keywords at a glance again, the better synthetics, the better naturals, the better processing and the ones that do it all. In general, in the forum in total, the innovation, one innovation we found was the use of sustainable chemical fibers such as PLA. It's really exciting. PLA is mostly made from grain, corn, sugar cane, or beetroot. Work is also currently underway to produce biopolymers from plant waste, biomass. In the future, and work is also ongoing for the production of PLA 
from methane and CO2. And the other exciting innovation we found was recycled nylon with titanium. And titanium is extremely lightweight and anti-magnetic. So better synthetics are recycled polyester with great performances, highly durable for workwear and PPE brands, embedded with an organic compound to enable touchscreen compatibility. Monocomponent recycled polyester made from cutting scrap and overstock fabrics and 100% polypropylene solution dyed with a PFC coating, free coating. The better naturals are 100% tensile lyocell woven fabric with a bio-based PU membrane which can reach 10K, 10K suitable for outdoor clothing, or hemp agroloop biofiber hemp crop leftovers that are used in an innovative spinning technology. The better processing, such as dope dyed nylon, knitted with three blended colors, waterless technology, extremely soft by master peach process, high performance abrasion resistance. The ones that do it all are monocomponent recycled polyester made from garment waste, retaining the original fabric color, so no dyeing required, reduced wastewater, carbon emission, and energy use. Pre and post consumer synthetic garments that are recycled and pre sorted or recycled polyester with waterless dope dye, solution dyeing, waterless printing, and better grouping of dyeing to a maximum capacity of a dyeing machine, and production nearby. So, please remember, all the materials can be ordered via, via the digital platform, so please use the QR code on the labels in the forum. And uh, when you see the sign, for example, 3D rendered, you can order this, you can download the fabric directly 3D for your comfort and try it out on your 3D programs to see if that fabric matches into your collection. Alexa, are you saying we didn't have to come to the show? We could just sit at home on the computer and order all the fabrics we wanted? But yet you cannot touch and feel them then. But they'll send them to, they'll send them to you. <laughs> We're trying to make people keen to be here. Do you mind? You know, but you have to scan the QR code on the actual fabrics. <laughs> so let's come to the awards. And I would I'd like to ask Charles Ross again to explain about our two awards we've been given. It is always hard to decide what's best. And we most probably had six fabrics. Um, and there were some brilliant fabrics but we have to boil them down to a champion winner. But we've also created, because of the theme of the industry, where sustainability is now a baseline, an embedded effect. We also have a fabric that has done something interesting on the eco side. I'm gonna talk about the champion fabric from Long Advance. It's uh, a polypropylene. We've seen a growth of polypropylene in the last year and a half. We're even seeing growth of polypropylene membranes now. Uh, Heli Henson have made it most commercial. Um, I know some people are here from trenchant textiles wandering around. Polypropylene, we don't quite understand properly, but the reason why we favor the one from Long Advance is they're using an additional set of good chemicals which have some oil resistance in. The subject of durable water resistancy is, and the forever chemicals, if you've ever watched the movie Dark Waters, you'll know the bad stuff we're talking about. They've made some progress towards oil resistancy. It is not the solution we want that gives the effect as good as fluorocarbons did, but it's a good bit of progress. So we have the long advance uh, fabric coming through. It's polyester and recycled polyester. Um, we're curious, but unfortunately, Long Advance aren't here. They uh, are here, but they oh, have no time. They are, oh, are they, in a They're too busy on stand. Do we yeah. know what hall Long Advance are in? <gasps> no. They're somewhere over yeah. there. If we'd prepared our notes properly. I mean, what I can add to this, um, I heard that Long Advance has been actually developing two years to develop that. Uh, they have been developing for two years to obtain a really good working functional two-layer fabric, and um, it took them two years to say, okay, now we can present it. So look out for it. Could I remind you, without having a membrane, having a 10,000 hydrostatic head is waterproof. 
and that's the interesting thing to talk about. But we can go and find them, but if I hand back to you for the Sustainability Award. Okay, thank you so much. And first of all, I would like to apologize because um, nothing is more um, inconvenient than finding out that you presented the wrong PowerPoint because I did two yesterday <laughs> and I just saw there are a little still little many mistakes such as the order of the awards. I would like to ask Ponte Torto on stage. <laughs> So, can I please hand this over to you? Thank you for creating this fantastic fabric. Can we have a microphone, haben, bitte? You'll notice that the award is highly convenient to put on your mantelpiece at home. It will unbalance and fall over every time you, you try really and display it. You really convinced the jury. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you so much. With this fantastic construction, and please let us know more about it. Uh, yeah, I would like to thank, first of all, I'm Roberto Lucchetti, one of the sales managers at Ponte Torto, and I'm really honored to receive this prize on behalf of our company. Uh, I, I thank the jury for uh, choosing us, uh, and uh, really appreciate that. Especially this year, we are celebrating our 70th anniversary, so there would not be better prize than this to receive to celebrate the anniversary. So, thank you again. Uh, what uh, we have to say about this quality. This quality belongs to in the Ponte Torto uh, Fabrics uh, hierarchy in our group of bio techno stretches, which mean techno uh, uh, stretch and bio. So both words are self explainable, but I would like to tell something more about them. Uh, let's go. Techno stretch means uh, uh, it's uh, ensure a guarantee of elasticity in all four directions, very quick drying and optimal breathability. So it's uh, useful it's, uh, and very good for any kind of uh, sport activity. But the most important of all is the idea of being bio, if we move, uh, uh, okay. Bio, why bio? Because the, the components uh, making this quality uh, the, uh, are two. One is the binding yarn, which is a, a recycled polyester. A recycled polyester in our company, it's more than uh, four decades that we're using that. So, uh, so it's nothing new, but it's important to stress that it's a very important fiber, which is uh, produced mechanically uh, out of uh, plastic bottles. Uh, most important of all is the idea of using hemp which is the reason, I guess, uh, why we have uh, got uh, this prestigious award, I think. Hemp, as we heard before, uh, is a most water repellent fiber among the natural ones, allows fast drying for optimal comfort. It's also a highly sustainable fiber since it stems from an antibacterial plant that does not require any pesticides or chemical fertilizers du during its growth. Uh, it's an ancient fiber used already 10,000 10, years ago, let's say in the prehistoric era. And at the same time, a very modern one capable of combining performance with maximum sustainability, thus meeting the most contemporary needs in the international sports systems. What more to say? Uh, by nature, hemp, it's a, very, it's a technical fiber because uh, it ensures in a way uh, it's antibacterial, antifungus, and it's uh, hydrophobic, so by nature, it, for botanical reasons, which I'm, I'm not aware of, but th let's say the quality, it's uh, uh, performing more than any other vegetable uh, uh, fibers by nature. Uh, the stems, uh, they grow fast and are very tall, so they, they don't need any fertilizer, they don't consume much water, and it's uh, important to say that uh, the use of hemp helps also to regenerate the soil, uh, because they, hemp doesn't consume so much of topsoil, after the harvest of, of, of very much consuming uh, uh, plants like corn or cotton, so it's also nice it's sustainable in this way. 
all the performances that you got into the plant, they are, they, they are also present in the, in the fiber. So when we're talking about uh, uh, hydrophobic, the fiber is hydrophobic as well as an antibacterial. That's why, uh, uh, as I underlined before, the quality has to be considered very functional. Something more to say about uh, uh, this quality coming to this specific quality is that hemp is used in the back side, in the brushed side. You know, everybody knows, uh, is facing the problem of microplastics. Once you brush a fleece, the back side, unfortunately, uh, loses some material, some microplastics which uh, once you wash the garment, they are released into the water uh, stream and they go directly in, into in the oceans. In, the, the, in this case, being the loop, the brushed loop of the back of the fabric done with a, a vegetable, a natural fiber, they, uh, we don't talk about microplastics, you can talk about micro uh, uh, particles. The micro particles are completely biodegradable, so they don't uh, pollute the waters. That's why this quality is very, very sustainable. Yeah, I mean, the fabric was, the, the jury was very much convinced about, I mean, you have to look at the construction on the wall because um, it's really interesting how the loops are created from the hemp yes. in the combination with the polyester. Yeah. And this is what excited us completely. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you really so much. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Do I to take this with me? Please. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> For those of you who hemp is a new material, two things you need to remember about hemp. Compared to cellulose, it's a lot closer to the viscose group in that it's much more durable as a fabric, certainly whilst wet. So that's durability from physical durability, and it also retains its UV ability, its UV proofing. But the one fact about hemp which has just fascinated me is if we have nuclear contaminated soil, if you plant a hemp crop, it will draw out all the impurities so your second crop can be a food crop. Nature is phenomenal. We haven't yet got our head around it. Hemp, to me, is a, f is a future fiber. We need to find out more. But Alexa. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charles. So, and that was it. Thank you so much for attending. I hope I could give you some interesting insights for today. Um, you can, if you want to, I'm very happy to send you a copy of the correct PDF. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. And uh, I also wanted to announce, so if you want to check out, I'm very proud to say that this is the premiere of um, my start in the Techsperts collab organization that I, we are going to be three women who want to help the industry for, to help in, to go into the perfect circle. Thank you so much for attending and go out and have a great show. If you want to ask Alexa questions, you can do it in two, well, three ways. You can email her, you can go to the website. If you've got the guts, you can ask the question publicly, or I'm not going to let Alexa disappear after this presentation. She'll be stood at the side of, of the presentation area, so you can have a one-to-one -one chat with her. But would anyone like to ask her a more public question? Because if not, I get to ask the first question. Anyone want to take on from what you've seen? Can I remind you, all of this presentation will be uploaded within 10 days, so you can go back and see what it is. I'm seeing no hands, Alexa. So can no, I then. ask you a question myself? Sure. I am honored enough to be one of your little jury members. What, I've, we've given out two winning fabrics. What other fabrics were in that top group of five or six that you really liked? You're kidding me now. <laughs> well, 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 can I start off? Yes, please. We saw a new waterproof membrane by Polartec, but unfortunately, it's half bio-based. Unfortunately, they'd bonded it to virgin fibers. And in our judging process, you've got to have over 50% recycled fibers. So although the membrane might be fantastic, it got kicked out of the judging process, and that really surprised me. We've got rules, they didn't comply. 
Um, but there's some good innovation going on yes, in, and in a I mean, whole range. The, we had, again, the Macintosh construction that we awarded in the last season. I mean, there were really fantastic uh, polypropylene Macintosh constructions. So please watch out for them. They are now on many different tables to be used as lightweight or heavier weight. And we said, it's so cool, but we cannot award it again. So, um, but it's absolute like a fantastic new standard if you want to go circular and work with polypropylene. Remember all the fabrics that Alexa has been talking about are on the performance forum, which is in the middle of the next big hall. The three halls join together. You'll be able to touch and feel and see what the shine is, see what the drape is and take it from there. But I'm still not seeing any questions. So, oh, oh, I am now. I've started. I'm coming to the back first. Um, yeah, thank you very much. So my question is about the awards. Uh, so I can imagine when we are awarding material, we cannot have any uh, concessions or compromise. So it should be a material that is recyclable, consisting out of recycled content, uh, not doing any harm during its use, but also not doing any harm when it's being uh, recycled, even, or even better, uh, should uh, improve, should regenerate uh, to get the uh, resources, but also should uh, be able to be upcycled, for example, when we are finished with that uh, material. So do you feel that the awards given are still compromises, or these are really the materials of the future that we can, we can, that we can start using and uh, we don't have any problems? Um, yeah, very... So that's an impossible that's a, that's question. That's a very, very good that. question, and I have to say, um, the jury, if the jury is not excited about an innovation, um, eco or performance, and it will not give an award. So if there is nothing that excites the jury and says there's something really innovative about this fabric, it's really, um, it's really, f it's future-proof, it's something that leads into a new future in a material development, um, then there will be no award. So all the fabrics that we award, we discuss intensely and sometimes really loud. <laughs> Um, and we have all sides of jury members that stand for, and we vote very, very um, with um, with all our hearts. And we say, and we always come to the points: or there is an award, or there isn't. So the ones that you see that are awarded, they have very something special. So we consider, and we consider all the different strategies, but sometimes you don't have it all in one fabric. But this fabric has uh, shows us a new direction, a new innovation where all other people might be interested in going into. I would just like to add, what we know is there's no perfect fabric. And as many good attributes, there's always a weak point, which is why we've got some rules. If there was a wonderful fabric, we wouldn't have this show. We would have one stand, and we would all be going to that one stand. But yeah, it, it's an impossible question to answer. I would like to see Radis come up with something that really shakes up the market. It is shaking up the market, but it's cellulosic and blah, blah, blah. And I have the other question. Uh, I have a question. Uh, you just mentioned it, uh, that fabric uh, which produced in uh, China and fabric which produced in uh, Europe, it's different type of uh, CO2. Uh, so if yarns are produced in China, and even sometimes we, cannot, we, we are not knowing this because supplier is not mentioning how in this case we can measure and uh, understand the sustainability of fab uh, fabric production? I'm going to answer this more tomorrow in the presentation about the HIG. We've been using the HIG index as the tool. And if you've never used it, it means you have a social life. To get a fabric through the HIG index rating, takes most probably 25 minutes of inputting the data. So it not only takes in what the raw material is, where it comes from, what grade it is, what finish it is, what processing. Most of that information is hidden when you buy fabrics. But as soon as you put it through one of these environmental and textile impact measurement systems, 
you actually get the information out. And that's why there's been so much talk about these different systems, because it's trying to get the right information. And what we do know is that we have patchy information. And they make good estimates. HIG also make bad estimates. Um, the one you'll always hear quoted is silk, because there's only one LCA on silk, and that comes from India. No one buys their silk from India. It's all Chinese, but we don't have information in that it from the Chinese market. So I really like the question. When you make contact with HIG themselves and have a look at their detail of information, and you'll actually be quite surprised. Now, HIG is not yet big in Europe. We see HIG is growing in Europe. In the United States, it has a third of the apparel textile and apparel brands are working with it, and 25% of the footwear brands. I keep on saying HIG as if it's the answer. HIG is by no means perfect, but it's the one that has more ticks than crosses. Does that answer your question? Right, are there any other questions? Before I get really nerdish and get going to it, can I ask you again to show your appreciation for Alexa, please? Thank you so much. Now, Alexa is going to disappear to the side of the stage in case anyone wants to talk to her. Coming up next, we've got Nora. If you've never listened to Nora before, Nora exists because of people like me. She is a trend predictor. The reason why we get Nora to come back each year is I've been listening to her solid for, for five and a half years now. She's never been wrong. Unlike me, as you can tell when I woke up this morning, I need to listen harder. So we've got Nora coming up next. You've got time to grab a coffee, take a convenience break before we go into Nora's presentation. All these presentations will be uploaded in 10 days' time so you can access them. Thank you. <laughs>